In this series of tutorials, we're going to be looking at CSS floats. We'll qu quickly introduce them in this intro video and look at a couple of the common use cases for floating. Now, CSS floats have a few properties we want to understand before we dive into the code. When you float a CSS object, you can either float it left or right. Once you've floated a CSS object, you have to clear the float in order to restore the normal document flow and you can either clear left, right, or both, both referring to left and right objects. A few important notes about CSS floating is when you float elements, they get removed from the document flow, much like absolute and fixed positioning. And CSS floats is an alternative to CSS positioning for laying out pages. One important thing to note is inline elements like text or paragraphs wrap around a floated element, and floated elements hover on top of other HTML elements, hence the term float. So those are a few of the basic properties of floats, and let's look at a couple of use cases. So typically floats are used to wrap text around an element, like in this case here, we have an image tag here, and if I want a paragraph of text to wrap around it, I would use CSS floats. The other main CSS float use is to create multi-column layouts. So a header, sidebar content, footer, etc. Just like we, just like we did with CSS positioning, CSS floats can be used to create these multi-column layouts. As floats can be often confusing at first, we'll start out with looking at a simple example of this wraparound floated element. Then the following video tutorials will cover how to create multi-column layouts using floats and talk a little bit about the plus and minus of the different methods. So let's jump over here to our web browser and uh, or rather our code editor and we're going to create a simple example of the floated element. So in order to do this we'll just set up a basic div tag and inside of this div we're going to load an image and a paragraph of text. So let's go ahead and open the image. We'll say image source equals and this image is under the resources folder images flower.jpg I believe is what it's called and we'll say alt equals flower and that image again is located if we go back here it's under my I'm currently working on this file so I go into the resources folder into the images and there it is flower.jpg so hence that relative file path now let's save this and jump over to our browser and refresh to make sure we got that image loaded and in fact we do now this image is quite large so I'm actually going to set a width and a height on this Again, as we covered in our previous tutorials, you wouldn't want to do this in a production site, but just to illustrate this, I'll set this equal to 30% and save and refresh. Whoops, I must have done something wrong there. We want, let's say width equals 30% and we'll say height. That's actually correct. It's 30% of the document width. So once we set this wrapper tag up, this div tag will adjust this value. So let's come over to our CSS and get this div tag set up so we can see it. We'll just do a simple tag based selector and we'll just say div um, or rather uh, let's set up the background color. So we'll say background color is, oh, let's just make this orange, something a little lighter. And we'll set the width to 500 pixels and we'll set the height equal to 500 pixels. And let's save and refresh here. So now we can see that width is coming into play. And then we're going to create our paragraph of text and wrap it all the way around here. So let's jump back over to our CSS and uh, let's get a paragraph inside of here. And we'll say this is a bunch of text. And we're just going to copy this and paste it quite a few times in here just to get a sample paragraph. And then we'll close that paragraph tag and save and come back to our web browser. Okay, so now we're looking good. So we have this image and we have some text. It's inside of this little div tag. So we're going to use a simple CSS float to wrap this text around the image. Now what we can do is we can take this image and if we come into our CSS, I'll say IMG. We're just gonna use simple tag base selectors here. And I'm gonna say float colon left. Remember left is one of the options. It's either gonna be left or right. So I'll just save this. And when I refresh here, you can see the image is now floated left, 
it gets removed from the document flow, but one of the natures of floating is when you float, type wraps around a floated element. So that's why the text is wrapping around this when this is floated left. And if I was to take this option and float it right, we'll be able to see here it's just the opposite happens. I can float this to the right side. Now this text, we actually don't want to bump all the way up against this. So uh, let's put this back to the left. So what we could do is we could add some padding on this image. So I maybe want to say padding is 15 pixels. And let's save and refresh. And you can see that adds that little bit of a cushion, right? So that that text doesn't run all the way up against uh, my image. And that's a simple example of floats and how it's used to wrap text around an image. In the next tutorials, we're going to look at the much more complex examples of creating page layouts with floated elements.